guys and welcome back to Mika Reacts and Reviews where we act and review to things on the internet same day, same shirt, a different video and today we are returning to our boy George Carlin uh, the king of comedy some may say um, and we're doing this video George Carlin on soft language it was released 12 years ago and has 7.7 .7 million views and 147,000 likes if you like these type of videos please like comment and subscribe hit that bell to get the notifications when I do upload all of that helps with the algorithm guys and if you'd like to support the channel you can also donate my PayPal me link is in the description box below and also in the comment section it helps but you don't have to you're gonna sit back relax and enjoy the video all right here we go I don't like words that hide the truth I don't like words that conceal reality I don't like euphemisms or euphemistic language and American English is loaded with euphemisms because Americans have a lot of trouble dealing with reality Americans have trouble facing the truth so they invent the kind of a soft language to protect themselves from it and it gets worse with every generation for some reason it just keeps getting worse I'll give you an example of that there's a condition in combat most people know about it. It's when a fighting person's nervous system has been stressed to its absolute peak and maximum, can't take any more input. The nervous system has either snapped or is about to snap. In the First World War, that condition was called shell shock. Simple, honest, direct language. Two syllables, shell shock. Almost sounds like the guns themselves. That was 70 years ago. Then a whole generation went by and the Second World War came along and we, the very same combat condition was called battle fatigue. Four syllables now, takes a little longer to say, doesn't seem to hurt as much. Fatigue is a nicer word than shock. Shell shock. Battle fatigue. <laughs> then we had the war in Korea, 1950. Madison Avenue was riding high by that time and the very same combat condition was called operational exhaustion. <laughs> hey, we're up to eight syllables now. And the humanity has been squeezed completely out of the phrase. It's totally sterile now. Operational exhaustion. Sounds like something that might happen to your car. <laughs> then, of course, came the war in Vietnam, which has only been over for about 16 or 17 years. And thanks to the lies and deceit surrounding that war, I guess it's no surprise that the very same condition was called post-traumatic stress disorder. PTSD. Still eight syllables, but we've added a hyphen. <laughs> and the pain is completely buried under jargon. Post-traumatic stress disorder. I'll bet you, if we'd have still been calling it shell shock, some of those Vietnam veterans might have gotten the attention they needed at the time. I'll bet you that. I'll bet you that. video is very still very much relevant today because even as he said that it gets worse every generation and I firmly believe that like hello PC culture cancel culture you can't even say fucking a man anymore like what the hell is that some politician said birthers on Mother's Day instead of mothers or women or now you have Wemexen now you have Latina X, <laughs> Latina X. Like, it's ridiculous. So many fucking white people are scared. They don't even know what to say. They're like, is it person of color or color people? Like, which one are we on this generation? Like, it's just ridiculous. And he's so correct. It hides the truth. It stops and prevents real hard, deep conversations because everybody's like, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say if you're going to offend it. I don't give a fuck. But I, I notice when people talk to me about hard situations because I'm black and I have a vagina that people are like, I don't know. Like, is she going to get offended to this? And then they have to like get to know me and realize I don't give a fuck. I'm not very easily offended. So it's just, he's completely correct. That it, and he's probably rolling over so many times in his grave right now to see how bad it has gotten. Well, you can't even just say woman. Like, you can't even say female. Like, 
It's ridiculous. The society in the world we got into. Now even the army, the military, the people that are supposed to protect your country are now going woke with their language. It's ridiculous. Why other people are engineering and innovating, we're worrying about pronouns. Are you fucking kidding me? We are the softest fucking nation right now. Peep, like, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <sighs> anyway, let's continue. <laughs> yeah. But, but it didn't happen. And one of the reasons, one of the reasons is because we were using that soft language. That language that takes the life out of life. And it is a function of time. It does keep getting worse. I'll give you another example. Sometime during my life, sometime during my life, toilet paper became bathroom tissue. <laughs> I wasn't notified of this. <laughs> no one asked me if I agreed with it. It just happened. Toilet paper became bathroom tissue. Sneakers became running shoes. False teeth became dental appliances. Medicine became medication. Information became directory assistance. The dump became the landfill. Car crashes became automobile accidents. Partly cloudy became partly sunny. Motels became motor lodges. House trailers became mobile homes. Used cars became previously owned transportation. <laughs> room service became guest room dining. And constipation became occasional irregularity. <laughs> when I was a little kid, if I got sick, they wanted me to go to the hospital and see the doctor. Now they want me to go to a health maintenance organization. Or a <laughs> wellness Why center to that? consult a health care delivery professional. Poor people used to live in slums. Now the economically disadvantaged occupy substandard housing in the inner cities. <laughs> and they're broke. They're broke. Hello. They don't have a negative cash flow position. They're fucking broke. Because <laughs> a lot of them were fired. You know, fired, management wanted to curtail redundancies in the human resources area. So many people are no longer viable members of the workforce. Smug, greedy, well-fed white people have invented a language to conceal their sins. It's as simple as that. The CIA doesn't kill anybody anymore. They neutralize people. <laughs> or they depopulate the area. The government doesn't lie and engages in disinformation. The Pentagon actually measures nuclear radiation in something they call sunshine units. <laughs> Israeli murderers are called commandos. Arab commandos are called terrorists. Contra killers are called freedom fighters. Well, if crime fighters fight crime and firefighters fight fire, what do freedom fighters fight? They never mention that part of it to us, do they? Never mention that part of it. And... Are we gonna stop it there? Um, he's right. A lot of the soft language is perpetuated by academics and academics within itself is kind of the bourgeoisie. They're usually kind of stay in their academic bubbles and never actually live real life, but dictate how society should evolve, I guess. And the reason why, again, a lot of people liked Trump because he used simple everyday language instead of the sort of this academic sort of language where it's like you have to be on my level to like understand where I'm coming from. Um, and going back to the military thing, I've heard of shell shock. I have never heard of the things in between, but yeah, now we call it PTSD. And I kind of agree a little bit because like my dad and my uncles were in the army, like the Vietnam War, I believe, and he gets excellent care. Like he always talks about how much he loves his health care. They take really good care of him. But my brother was in the Afghan and Iran Iraq war and he always complained about how, how hard it was for him to get his health care like he suffered really bad PTSD or shell shock and you know he's seen people being blown 
to bits and pieces because he was a medic, he was a frontline medic, and he had a lot of mental problems or psychological issues going coming back home. He did a little bit in the beginning uh, with substance abuse issues that he's gotten under control, but he like literally had to beg for some mental help. Like he had to beg for someone to help him, and so. But on my my on the other hand, my dad is always talking about how great his 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 medical insurance is that the army has given him. So like maybe that's true. Like maybe if we didn't soften up the language, uh, army vets would get better health care or better help. I do think it it also depends on rank because I have another brother that's higher rank and he's better off. But um, anyway, I totally agree. Let's continue. And some of this stuff is just silly. We know, we all know that. Like on the airlines, they say they want to pre-board. Well, what the hell is pre-board? What does that mean? <laughs> to get on before you get on? <laughs> they say they're going to pre-board those passengers in need of special assistance. Cripples! Oh. Simple, <laughs> honest, direct language. Oh, There's no that, shame you. attached to the word cripple that I can find in any dictionary. No shame attached to it. In fact, it's a word used in Bible translations. Jesus healed the cripples. Doesn't take seven words to describe that condition. But we don't have any cripples in this country anymore. We have the physically challenged. Is that a grotesque enough evasion for you? How about differently abled? I've heard them call That's that the one, differently yeah. abled. You can't even call these people handicapped anymore. They'll say, we're not handicapped, we're handy capable. <laughs> these poor people have been bullshitted by the system into believing that if you change the name of the condition, somehow you'll change the condition. Well, hey, cousin, <laughs> doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. We have no more deaf people in this country, hearing impaired. No one's blind anymore, partially sighted or visually impaired. We have no more stupid people. Everybody has a learning disorder. <laughs> or he's minimally exceptional. How would you like to be told that about your child? He's minimally exceptional. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> Psychologists actually have started calling ugly people those with severe appearance deficits. It's getting so bad that any day now I expect to hear a rape victim referred to as an unwilling sperm recipient. And we have no more old people in this country. No more old people. We shipped them all away and we brought in these Senior citizens. Isn't that a typically American 20th century phrase? Bloodless, lifeless. No pulse in one of them. A senior citizen. But I've accepted that one. I've come to terms with it. I know it's here to stay. We'll never get rid of it. That's what they're going to be called, so I'll relax on that. But the one I do resist, the one I keep resisting, is when they look at an old guy and they'll say, Look at him, Dan. He's 90 years young. Imagine the fear of aging that reveals. To not even be able to use the word old to describe someone. To have to use an antonym. And fear of aging is natural. It's universal, isn't it? We all have that. No one wants to get old. No one wants to die. But we yeah. do. So we bullshit ourselves. <laughs> I started bullshitting myself when I got to my 40s. As soon as I was in my 40s, I'd look in the mirror and I'd say, Well, I, I guess I'm getting older. Older sounds a little better than old, doesn't it? Sounds like it might even last a little longer. <laughs> Bullshit, I'm getting old. And it's okay, because thanks to our fear of death in this country, I won't have to die. Deceased. I'll pass away. <laughs> or I'll expire like a magazine subscription. If it happens in the hospital, they'll call it a terminal episode. The insurance company will refer to it as negative patient care outcome. And if it's the result of malpractice, they'll say it was a therapeutic misadventure. I'm telling you, some of this language makes me want to vomit. Well, maybe not vomit. Makes me want to engage in an involuntary personal protein spill. <laughs> Thank you all.
Oh god, that was really really funny. That's just so true. I'm looking at the first comment and it says, what about we don't kill our pets? We put them to sleep. You're like, ah, uh, they're dying. They're not sleeping. Um, or you can't say fat or obese. You have to say like real bodies. Like these are real bodies. Um, or even like old folks home and retirement homes. Like I never know which one to say. Like retirement because old is like, is that an insult? Um, look, I don't have a problem with some of the language change because I just think language and society just change. Like I wouldn't be okay with people still referring to me as Negro. I mean, I wouldn't be okay with someone referring to a little person as midget. You know what I mean? So I do think like some of it's okay, but I do think like all roads to good, you know, all roads pave is to hell is with good intentions. They always go way too fucking far. And I do think a lot of the push does just destroy. Again, dialogue, conversation, and eventually it would just destroy progress. Like a lot of people want to change language for progress, but with the softening up language in PC culture, you actually eventually prevent progress because no one can have a fucking conversation and ask hard questions anymore because everyone's terrified of hurting someone's fucking feelings and like Dr. Jordan Peterson would say it is not your human right not to be offended all right anyway tell me what you guys think put it in the comment in the comment section below like comment and subscribe hit that bell to get the notifications when i do upload all of that helps with the algorithm guys and if you'd like to support this channel you can donate my paypal me link is in the description box below and also in the comment section it helps but you don't have to you can just like comment and subscribe oh, please <laughs> I also have a travel vlog channel if you would like to see where I am in the world. I do travel full time. You can go in the description box below and also in the comment section. Hit the link, go subscribe to my travel vlog channel and or follow me on Instagram. My stories is usually what's most up to date. I will have other social media platforms at some point like Rumble or Minds or BitChute. Um, maybe uh, Parlor. Um, Twitter and stuff like that. I do have a Twitter account, but it's just my speak freely. I think is in the description box below. But eventually, as I grow, I will have more platforms, social media platforms that's more dedicated to this channel. So just bear with me. Anyway, guys, you guys have an amazing, amazing day. Bye.